Ex -seal. Expert in martial arts, weapons and tactics. Under Siege sailed onto the silver screens in the USA in October of 1992, with the UK released the following February. Received a great critical and commercial success. Made with a production budget of 35 million, drawing over 15 back in its US opening weekend alone, eventually pulling in 80 in its initial theatrical run, making it the top grossing movie of 1992. This was followed by an even bigger success on the home video market. The film on the surface looked as if it was going to be another Die Hard clone from its initial advertising and trailer, and this method of marketing proved successful, though I feel it short sold it somewhat, as it's more than just Die Hard on a boat. The film opens detailing the nuclear decommissioning of a real life American battleship, the USS Missouri. Following a presidential ceremony to commemorate 50 years since Pearl Harbor, the Missouri is on its final voyage in the middle of the Pacific Ocean when it's overtaken by a group of terrorists in league with a disgruntled commander Krill, whom have landed on the ship under the guise of entertainment for the captain's surprise birthday party. The terrorists, led by ex-CIA operative William Stranix, take over the ship and imprison all of the crew so that they have full control of the ship, intending to steal the ship's nuclear arsenal to sail on the black market. These things are going to sell like hotcakes. Absolutely. They think they have all of their bases covered, but soon become unstuck when a disgraced ex-Navy SEAL, now working as a cook, is on the loose. I'm just a cook. And attempts to thwart their plans. The remainder of the film's scenes alternate between the events on board the ship and the command centre at the Pentagon, whose only contact is Ryback and his sidekick. All the while, the terrorists are making plans to offload the nukes onto a submarine. The film was directed by Andrew Davis. Andrew had previously worked with Seagal on his first film, Above the Law. At this point, Davis had a few big films under his belt, including the Chuck Norris film Code of Silence and the Gene Hackman thriller The Package. Following the success of Under Siege, Davis went on to direct such films as The Fugitive, Chain Reaction and Collateral Damage amongst many others. Under Siege stars martial arts action star Steven Seagal in his fifth movie following the incredible box office success with his previous films Above the Law, Hard to Kill, Out for Justice and Marked for Death. The success of Under Siege proved Seagal as a bankable star and spawned several more films in its wake. On Deadly Ground, a small part in the Kurt Russell action movie Executive Decision and a disappointing sequel Under Siege 2. But with diminishing returns, Seagal soon became relegated to the director video movies. He made a short-lived comeback in the early 2000s starring alongside rapper DMX in the film Exit Wounds. Since then, his only other theatrical appearance was the villain in Robert Rodriguez's Machete. Under Siege is billed as a Steven Seagal movie, although he's actually only on screen for 40 of its 103 minute runtime. This almost goes unnoticed, as there's such a strong supporting cast. Tommy Lee Jones stars as William Stranix, the ex-CIA operative now turned nuclear weapons thief after a botched attempt on his life by his former employer. Tommy Lee Jones had worked previously with director Andrew Davis on the Gene Hackman thriller, The Package, and has an extensive filmography Jones's first on-screen credit was a bit part in the pilot episode of the successful TV series Charlie's Angels in 1976. Throughout the remainder of his career, he went on to star in many big movies, with credits such as The Fugitive, Volcano, and The Men in Black movies, amongst many others. Whilst now in his mid-70s, he has obviously slowed down somewhat, but is still working. Gary Busey stars as Commander Krill, who serves second in command on the ship, but sells everyone out to be the man on the inside for the takeover of the ship to facilitate Stranix's plan. Boosie had an impressive career behind him, with his first film role starring alongside Clint Eastwood in 1974's Thunderbolt and Lightfoot. Several big roles followed prior to his Oscar-nominated performance as Buddy Holly in The Buddy Holly Story. Boosie's career continued well into the 80s 
with roles in big films such as Stephen King's Silver Bullet and Lethal Weapon. Boosie was involved in a motorcycle accident in 1988, suffering brain damage and almost losing his life. This didn't keep him out of the game for long though, returning to big film roles two years later, with supporting roles such as Predator 2 and Point Break before starring in Under Siege. Boosie had a troubled life for much of the remainder of the 90s, including a drugs overdose in 95 and cancer in 97. Gary's wild behaviour and eccentricity made him a perfect candidate to star in several reality shows since then, including the UK celebrity Big Brother in 2014, in which he won, becoming the first American to do so. Erica Eleniak stars as Playboy model Jordan Tate, brought onto the ship in an attempt to disguise the true intentions of the party, softening the idea for an unauthorised helicopter landing. Jordan is given some sleeping pills, which she thinks are for seasickness, but sleeps through the party and emerges out of the cake once the terrorists have taken over. Erica was best known at the time for her role on the hit TV series Baywatch. Erica's first acting credit was for a Star Wars underwear commercial. Following this, she landed a part in Steven Spielberg's E.T., credited simply as Pretty Girl. In Under Siege, she was introduced as Miss July 89. Coincidentally, Erica was actually Miss July in the July 1989 edition of Playboy. Fun fact, this magazine was also featured in another movie, in 1990's Home Alone. Erica went on to star in several other films since Under Siege, including Chasers and The Beverly Hillbillies. Since then, she has appeared in a number of smaller roles on television. Other notable actors in the film include Irish actor Cole Meany, a well-known face appearing in such titles as Con Air, The Commitments and Star Trek, amongst many others. The captain of the ship was the final role for veteran actor Patrick O'Neill. With over 120 credits to his name, Patrick had appeared in a wide variety of film and television roles, including The Stepford Wives, Murder, She Wrote, Columbo, and the cult classic 1985 horror, The Stuff. A bigger character as any is the ship itself. The USS Missouri was the ship portrayed in the film. She was part of the 50th anniversary of Pearl Harbor ceremony, and the filmmakers utilised real-life footage of this for the start of the film. The Missouri has a very rich history. It was on this ship that the Japanese signed their surrender, ending World War II. It also played a big part in both the Korean War from 50 to 53 and the Gulf War of 91. Eagle-eyed viewers will also notice it was used in the Cher music video, If I Could Turn Back Time. Since 1998, the Missouri has been fully decommissioned and is now in Pearl Harbor as a museum and tourist attraction. For most of the shots in the film, sets were used for the interiors and the USS Alabama was used for external ones. The memorial ship USS Alabama has been docked in its memorial park since 1947. However, for shots where the ship needs to be seen at sea, the filmmakers surrounded the site of the ship with a 100-foot black cloth, which enabled many of the nighttime scenes to be shot with ease and make it look like the ship was actually out at sea. Prolific composer Gary Chang provided a great score to the picture. Gary has an impressive discography for film work, including such scores as The Breakfast Club, Death Warren and Firewalker, amongst many other television works. Gary won a BMI award for his work on Under Siege the following year, standing alongside others such as John Williams, Jerry Goldsmith, Alan Silvestri and Danny Elfman. The score was released by Verez Saraband on both CD and cassette. Under Siege was a massive hit for Warner Brothers and had an influence on many movies in the following years. Its director, Andrew Davis, went on with Tommy Lee Jones for The Fugitive the following year, and it's rumoured that it was only after seeing Under Siege that Harrison Ford agreed to star. A third Die Hard movie was intended to go into production using a script taking place on a cruise liner. However, it was scrapped because it was too similar to Under Siege. Die Hard 3 ended up using a script originally intended as a lethal weapon sequel entitled Simon Says, and the cruise liner script was reworked for Speed 2 Cruise Control. A sequel to Under Siege was released in 1995, but was nowhere near as successful. It was discovered during the early stages of production that Gary Boosie's deal for the first film included sequel rights. 
Therefore, Gary Boosie got paid, even though he wasn't in the movie. Outstanding. Which reportedly took three quarters of a million out of his budget. Matt Reeves was a co-writer of this sequel, who went on to write, produce and direct 2022's The Batman. Under Siege is a fondly remembered movie, amongst many, from a time when martial artists such as the likes of Seagal and Van Damme were used as leading action stars. This has all changed now, and instead of martial arts stars being taught to act, it's now the other way round. Actors are now taught how to do the action, with modern day films such as The Fast and the Furious, The Taken and John Wick movies. But that's a story for another day. As always, thanks for watching and see you next time on Retro Reels. Under Siege.